fans, do you want to win your share of $100,000? Simply enter the houseofboxing.com fight night prediction challenge. Compete with boxing fans around the world. Simply head over to houseofboxing.com and sign up now. This is Charlie Parsons for Boxing Social in association with William Hill and houseofboxing.com. The big man, the Don, the gaffer, Callis Howland. How are we, mate? Uh, like that introduction is incredible. I just always look around like who's, who's turning up. Very kind, Charlie. Thank you so much, sir. I'm very well. Great to be here in Manchester. Massive, massive week. Record-breaking week is in the air. I can smell it. I can smell it. I'll smash some records this week, people. How excited are you? You'll see on Saturday night how excited I am. There are going to be some memes going on about <laughs> I tell you something. If you think I look mad on a normal night of boxing Saturday night, going to be rocking, rolling, breaking records, smashing everything. And I mean everything. Everything? Everything. <laughs> Colour some man for one man. Let's go straight into it. KSI takes on Tommy Fury. Uh, I know when negotiating with the Furies, you think you've got it over the line. And there's always that little bit more. But we're here on fight week. Tommy and Dylan did their media last night. KSI and Logan to do theirs tonight. It's real now. We're in the zone. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, the, the, I thought I thought actually the Fury side of the negotiations, well, yeah, it was it was tough, it was tough, but it wasn't it wasn't dirty tough. I've been in negotiations where it's dirty tough. You know, John's a John just you know straight shooter. Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was look at the end of the day the negotiation. You know, there's there's times when you think, nah, fuck it, we'll go on to someone else and. But I think we both always wanted to, to make the fight. I went up and saw them in lovely Morecambe. Um, great place, by the way. Great setup they got there. And um, no, they were, you know, straight up, you know. Yeah. Hard, hard, hard on both sides, back and forth. But, but at the end of the day, it, was, it wasn't a, you know, sometimes you get those nasty negotiations. They're like, like throwing like shots left and right and I do it sometimes as well if I'm in a bad mood but yeah this one but this one was this one was pretty straight up you know a lot of industry experts expect Tommy Fury to win um, but I suppose that is the great thing about KSI the man's relentless he trains you can never really write him off right? I just can't work out like, what do they base that on on or they base it on that Tommy Fury is a pro with a, some sort of a pro record and, and, and uh, a slight amateur background and being from the Fury family and the Jake Paul fight is enough? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah, with a Jake Paul fight, I mean, you know, yeah, it, it's not right home too often about that one. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was all right. Yeah, he okay, done, done the trick over, you know, the the the, uh, who, the guy who touted himself as the number one in that space. But at the same time, he. Yeah, he looks like he's got very good jab, Tommy. Yeah, he's got very good jab for, for any pro would be happy with that jab. Very good jab. But I see things that, that KSI can exploit with, with his skill set that's improving, you know. So but you don't really you can't really especially traditionalists, they haven't probably even seen some of KSI's fights. It's not like and there's not really much to see. It's more about what's happening in the gym at this stage. You know, he's learning. Yeah, I mean we're always learning, but you know, the learning curve when you start something is always much faster, isn't it? You know, it's just the way it is. Say no more. Let me ask you about the co-main event. Like I say, Dylan Dennis done his media last night. Are you 100% sure he will be in the ring on Saturday? And if he is in the ring, are we going to make sure he doesn't do anything illegal? Because last night he told me that if he gets in the ring with Logan Paul, he's going to put him in a rear naked choke. In a, in a what? Choke? A rear naked choke. That's what he said. I don't, if, if anyone wants to pick up on me, I don't know me MMA. That sounds like one of those things you see on some of those old German <laughs> movies. No, uh, no. I would. Uh, I don't know what that is. Uh, I hope he doesn't. Some form of disqualifying. It's, it's under boxing rules, just to be very clear. I know it's misfits, but it is boxing rules. It's governed by the uh, Professional Boxing Association, and it and it, you know, it's a fight. You know, so he does that and he'll be out there pretty quickly and, and Logan Paul will be the winner. I don't know, he's, he's, they're all full of fun and games. Like he pulled out last week twice, Logan Paul broke his hand last week twice and you know, that's what they do, you know. This fight has had two billion impressions, yeah, so in the, in the build-up, yeah. 
Now, Charlie, I know you're a popular man, you know, um, but two billion impressions is pretty impressive, isn't it? How many pay-per-view buys does this fight do? In excess of one million? Seven figures. We're going to smash records Saturday. I'm not going to gloat about it yet. I'll do that on Sunday. Is this one of the biggest events you've ever been involved in? Um, I don't really like to quantify, you know, if I compare it to, I don't know, Klitschko, Hay, or some of the World Boxing Super Series finals, or, I don't know, Kessler, Frotch, the, the two fights, the Super Six, you know, I've done that, I think, heavyweight championships for, for three decades, but it's different, isn't it? You know, it's totally different. Am I more excited than I've ever been before a show? Yeah, I probably am. You know, I've got all, all, the whole family final, kids are flying over, you know, coming in. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's, it's a totally different vibe. It's like you're excited to be entertained. You put a smile on my face, man. Yeah, but you're like, you're like just excited to be entertained. So I, I get people when they say it's not for me. Fair enough, not for you. They don't watch it. But if you're saying, oh, well, they're rubbish and all that, no, well, it's not about, you're missing the point here, people, right? It's entertainment, right? So... And yeah, it's entertainment that revolves around our sport uh, of boxing. That's what they do. They're entertainers who box. So it's like, just, just you know, you're going to be entertained for, what, six hours Saturday night? And watch the people. They, that at Manchester Arena is going to be full from the first second, you know, from the first second, not from the main event, throughout that massive undercard, throughout the prelims, the whole lot. Can't wait. Lastly, before I pick your brains about a couple of other things in the world of boxing, Dan Raphael put out a tweet last night. I saw the price of the DAZN boxing pay-per-view for KSI Fury. Nonsense. 54.99 in the US. Low, 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 low. Not sure I'd watch that if they gave me the $54. A lot of people saying, I personally thought it was a decent price point in the US climate. What did you make of those comments? I, 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 you know, you see pay-per-views in the US go to 100 bucks. So I, I don't know what Dan's on about. But then again, Dan's like proper traditionalist. Maybe it's not for him. You know, I don't know. I mean, you can watch Devin Haney versus Progress in a couple of weeks. Nice fight. You know, it'll be one of 15,000 people watching that. You know, so it is what it is. You know, what do you want me to say? You know, this is not, it's not for him. But we can't argue with a price point. The price point, I think, I think spot on, you know? All right, Kala, let me ask you. We saw a tweet today um, let me just read it out. I want to make sure I get it word for word correct. Eddie Hearn has reportedly now agreed a deal to stage Chris Eubank Jr. versus Conor Ben on December the 3rd, 23rd in the Middle East, likely Abu Dhabi. If they're not able to do it in the UK due to an ongoing appeal in Ben's UCAD case, which may not be heard till December, January. Kala, does this fight happen this year? This is you getting back at Eddie, isn't it? Um, I think, you know, it's, it's an option that we have on, you know, we're looking at from our side. They're looking at it from their side. It's not done yet. I don't, you said that then. But I don't, I think the way it's been said has been like a little bit twisty. But, you know, Eddie likes to put rods out there and, and, he, and, and, and it's, not, it's not wrong. You know, it's a massive fight. And, and, but at the same time, we haven't done a deal with Abu Dhabi yet. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's a discussion that's, that has taken place. But at the same time, Eubanks got options as, as Ben's got options. So we want to sit down in the next few days. We will know much, much more. Have Chris and Connor agreed Percy's? Uh, for this fight, no, no. But 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 it's, it's not necessary. It's not that they talk to each other and say, all right, all right, Connor, all right, Chris, what are you getting? What am I getting? No, it's not the way it works. It's the way the, the portions are dealt with. A lot of the framework has sort of been dealt with already by default, you know? So it's quite an easy deal to put together. That deal has not been agreed for December the 21st. A deal has not yet been agreed for December 23rd, no. You know I've got to ask you, Kala. Um, right, moving on, Filip Hergovic. Uh, looks like Fury Usyk, obviously signed. Uh, just firstly... Was I, I was in a good mood, Nate. You're trying to... I, I see what you're hey, doing. This is my job, Calla. I see what... No, I love you, mate. I've still I got to ask. I see what you're doing, Charles. And this is this is unfair. Right. I've got to ask. Where do I start? Okay, let me start with the, 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 the landscape, right? We've got the king. The king of the heavyweights. Top of the world. Tyson Fury. Totally deserves it. I love Tyson a bit. Totally deserves it. But let's face it. He's king. So what does a king do? He waves his finger about, right? 
He absolutely takes the chronic piss, right? Why does he do this? Why does Tyson take the chronic piss? Because he can! He can take the chronic piss because he's Tyson Fury, he's king of the heavyweights. He's earned that place so he can take the chronic fucking piss, right? That's what it is. He's earned that. That's what he's earned, right? Now, here we are, the challengers, right? Coming through, riding through. Now, whilst the king is doing that, you've got like a prince. The prince is oozing, right? We want to we want to dethrone the prince, we want to decapitate him, right? Not literally, don't get carried away Charles, I can see you giggling there. But what we want to do is, we want to chop off the prince's head to get to the king. Whilst the king is feasting on Engarnu and other bits and bobs in the background, right? I've got this very vivid imagination of this. Loving this! Unfortunately, while, whilst the king is feasting with Engarnu, the prince could be fighting against the challenger. But no, the prince... Oh, the prince is Little Balls, right? We've got Big Balls on the throne. Little Balls hasn't got, quite got to Big Balls yet. He doesn't want to fight Hergovic because he could chop him off very easily. Very high risk, low reward. So he wants that right to fight for the throne because lots of, lots of money, lots of money coming in. That's what Herg, that's so Uzik's play is, I'll play on time. He doesn't want a box, right? And I love, I love Uzi. I promoted Uzi many fights. In fact, I made him unified champion in cruiserweight. But at the same time, he don't. People say Tyson's pissing on the sport of boxing. Uzi shitting on it then, right? Because he should be fighting Hergovic in the meantime as his mandatory challenger since over a year, right? And the IBF are, you know, playing a blind eye to it, which we'll see how far that gets the lawyers are on that at the moment because it's an absolute piss take right what i'm gonna do with tyson tyson should go do his thing right but you're telling me that tyson fury who in this frame of mind right king of the world netflix king king of heavyweights you name it right making millions and millions of dollars right to fight engano and apparently john jones or whatever is gonna fight he's gonna suddenly fight who's it because Who's it wants to fight him in February? Tyson Fury will not fight him in February. You must be joking. He's going to go and celebrate the Engano win for about six weeks. Then it's Christmas. He'll have a bit of wine, a bit of turkey over Christmas. And he'll wake up at the beginning of January, quite rightly, with a big belly, right? The king, right? Feasting over Christmas. And then he'll get himself back into camp, because that's what he does. And he'll get into shape for a fight. And that might be who's it in May, June. The problem is then slowly Saudi Arabia closes up. So we'll probably end up with that fight on the other side of next summer. Why? Because the king does what the fuck the king wants to do. Right? That's what it is. And I, I can't begrudge Tyson because that's what he's earned. He's gone up, he's gone through there. He went, he went to Germany, dethroned the king at the time, Klitschko, who was on that throne for 10 years, done that. And since that day, the heavyweights have been different. So he's earned it. But this isn't a thing about Tyson and Hergovic, is it? We're not even talking about that. We're talking about Hergovic, Uzik. And it's still something that, you know, we're, we're you know, there's a lot of weird shit going on. I talked today, Otto Wallin is suddenly above. Uh, number three, above number two. Which is very odd. I'm sure they'll be protesting against that. But, but at the same time, so I'm looking at it and thinking like, what the f is going on here? It's weird. Would you like to make Joshua Hergovic? It's just arrived. Dylan Dennis has arrived. He's in the house, so it looks a good Nick. What an entourage. Quite an entourage. The, the Americans love an entourage, isn't it? If I was they a, do, don't they? Boxer, I'd, I'd literally have four people. people well, that's yeah. it. You know, come for a row, innit? You know? Just they, quickly. 400. Just quickly, Kala. Um, if whatever happens with Fury and uh, Fury Usyk happens. Do you try to make Fury Joshua, given the IBF Otto Wallin thing for the, I, for the IBF? Say again? Do you, want you try him, sorry, uh, a, God, can I, I can't I even speak. Make, Anthony Joshua versus Philip Hergovic. It's a sign you're not telling me. You've got an idea of how I can make that fight. Hey, I'll nick, it's always good for business, Captain. I'll nick AJ off Eddie and I'll nick Fury off Frank and then we'll make that fight. I meant to say Joshua Hergovic. You heard it here first, me and Parsons. We got the ideas. So business associate. Um, Joshua Hergovic, you like Joshua to make that? Uh, great fight. Does AJ take that fight? I don't know. Uh, AJ, AJ's ballsy. To give a, AJ, AJ is a ballsy fighter. 
He does, he does, he does throw his hat in the ring. You know? He, does, he did in the rematch with, with Uzik, uh, where I think, and everyone else, thinking, he should have waited with that rematch. But he's, he's, he's never turned the fight down, has he? Hello, you've put a big smile on my face this afternoon. Lastly from me, will we see John Fury fight on Misfits? John Fury fight on Misfits. I'm looking for an opponent as we speak. John Fury, don't worry. We are looking for an opponent for you now. Boris Johnson turned it down. I did ask Boris. Now John wanted to fight Boris uh, as a warm-up. For... Genuinely? No, not genuinely. Okay, that would have been the best fucking... That would have been bigger than this, Cal. Ask him, ask him, ask him whether he would fight Boris Johnson, because I'd like to make John Fury versus Boris Johnson on Misfits. Callis Allen, always a pleasure, my man. Straight face. Straight face.